Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Estimate and Apportionment. Uh, today on Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. Um, Stephanie, would you like to call the roll, please? Mayor Cruzan? I'm here. Comptroller Green? Here. President Reed? You're muted, President Reed. Here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, items presented for the first time. Item number one, 20.098. Request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of contracts and leases for various city departments as listed on Exhibit A. Number two, 20.099, request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of intra-departmental and interdepartmental transfers from various city departments as listed on Exhibit B. Number three, request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of transfers between projects for capital improvement funds listed on Exhibit C. Number four, 20.101, request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of a resolution to withdraw the preliminary application for inclusion of the St. Louis Lambert International Airport from the FAA Airport Privatization Pilot Program. Number five, 20.102, request from the Comptroller's Office Deputy Comptroller for approval to overspend accounts as needed to meet the city's financial obligation for the remainder of the fiscal year. Number six, 20.103, request from the Comptroller's Office, Deputy Comptroller, Finance and Development for approval of Ward Bill 16. This ordinance authorizes the issuance of tax and revenue anticipation notes, Trans Series 2020, not to exceed $65 million. Number seven, request from the President of the Board of Aldermen's Office, Chief of Staff for approval of Ward Bill 13. This ordinance allows for the transfer of funds from the parking meter fund to the general reserve fund in the amount of five million. Number eight, 20.105, request from the director of airports for approval of board bill 12. Ordinance approves the first supplemental agreement to the airport aid agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission to reimburse the city up to $515,000 for direct costs <clears throat> incurred for marketing and promotion of air service at the airport and extends the original agreement to 1231.20. Number nine, 20.106, request from the St. Louis Development Corporation Director of Commercial Development for approval of the final forms of bond documents as authorized by ordinance number 71088, which approved the issuance of up to $50 million of industrial development revenue bonds for Square Inc. Number 10, 20.107, request from the Law Department City Councilor for approval of a voluntary disclosure agreement which would allow the settlement and collection of tax-related gross receipts of a prepaid telecommunications service provider. That's the extent of the items presented for the first time. Madam Mayor, I would like us to divide out uh, item one Item seven and item 10. Okay, I don't, that's fine. Is there a motion? Are you making a motion? Okay. Hold on a second. I'd yes. also, I would make a motion to approve items two through six. No, I would like item number four separated out. And I would like item number six separated out. Madam Mayor, then I would uh, move that we would approve items two, three, five, eight, and nine. Is there a and second? Mayor, I would we have a motion to approve. Madam Mayor, before you, I, I would like item 10 to be included uh, for approval, but I would like ex uh, to have some discussion. So that's I, okay. I prefer to have, as you said previously, I prefer to have item number 10 uh, separated out. Okay, that's fine. So that would be items two, three, five, eight, and nine. I'm moving for approval, Madam Mayor. Second. All in favor of approving items number two, three, five, eight, eight and, and nine. Yes. Did we get the motion right on that? Yes, I think she said five, two, three, eight, five, and nine. Two, okay. three, five, eight, and nine. That's okay. correct. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of items two, three, five, eight, and nine, say aye. 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 Madam Comptroller, did I hear you? Aye. 
Okay, great. All right, items two, three, five, eight, and nine are passed. Madam Mayor, I would like to move to item 10 um, for uh, passage of item 10. Make a motion to pass item 10, and I would like an explanation or discussion to be had if there's a second. Hearing no second, I'll leave it up to you. I said second. You said Perfect. second? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, item number 10 is before us uh, with a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Yes, Madam Mayor. I'd like to start it out by saying that for months, the law department has worked with the Office of the Comptroller and to a successful uh, a conclusion to bring this item before the Board of b and a And uh, that's thanks to Barb uh, Burkett, who is all with us today, and that she would like to take the liberty to talk about her uh, hard work on this uh, item. Barb, you're on mute. I'm, oh, I'm on mute. Oh, uh oh. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Ground. I was contacted by Carol Isles from the Brian Cave Law Firm um, with this concept. She had a client who hadn't paid taxes. Um, and, and she wanted to come forward and make a settlement so that um, they could get and then pay going forward. So um, the voluntary disclosure agreement that you see represents um, four years of gross receipts taxes from their um, um, telephone wireless provider service. Um, and it, uh, there's also um, $118,000 approximately dollars of interest that will be coming to the city and they're going to pay taxes moving forward. Um, without Ms. Isles coming forward, we were not aware of the identity, so um, we had no one to, to pursue. So uh, this is the, the background of this item and if you have any other uh, questions, I'll be happy to, to share what information I have. Thank you, Barb. I've got a few questions on this. Um, it's my understanding that um, Alderwoman Green, that you, not Alderwoman, I'm so sorry, Comptroller Green, that you uh, asked the law department to put this on the agenda. And I'm, I'm glad that you did. Um, so my, I, yeah, I want, I want the million dollars, absolutely. But we don't know who this is. Um, so that, it seems to me that we should know who it is. Um, in addition to that, it look, says that they've been operating uh, in St. Louis since 2014, uh, 2014. Uh, so that's quite a long while. Um, I don't know why we didn't know about it. I think that's a fair question. And the other question I have is, well, who else out there is like that who is also operating in the city of St. Louis without paying the gross receipts tax? And how do we how do we find those uh, tax scoff laws? Um, you know, do they have a business license? I mean, I get it; they, they're paying the gross receipts tax, but do they have a business license? Have they been paying the earnings tax? Uh, you know, there's all kinds of question that that this brings up for me. Um, and I'm just hesitant to vote on a blank, um, a blank settlement agreement without without knowing more. Um, even though, yes, I'd like to have the million dollars, and especially now, uh, with uh, facing, you know, potentially between this year and next year, 120 potentially million dollar tax shortfall. But I, I just think signing in the blind here is, is not something I'm very comfortable with. It also seems unusual to me that any settlement agreement comes to ENA because I don't ever recall a settlement agreement coming before us before. So those are my concerns. 
Um, so I don't know if you can address that or not, Barb. Well, I, I, I'm afraid I can't address why we don't know who they are. I don't, you know, I'm not going to be able to speak to that. But um, I, I know that who this particular anonymous one is because they had gone to an attorney who came forward and reached out and wanted to reach a settlement. Um, she will not tell us the identity until we reach the settlement. There is a clause in the agreement that if um, that they can be, um, their records can be reviewed and if they have materially misrepresented any fact that the that it will be void, the agreement will be void. Um, so there is there is that. This is very unusual. I have not um, seen anything like it. I can say that um, the state of Missouri and the city of Kansas City have statutes and ordinances that allow this procedure, this voluntary disclosure agreement to, for people to come forward and do some sort of tax workout. We do not have an ordinance like that, which would provide us a, a very smooth path, but, and, and perhaps we should, and perhaps that should be our next step if that is something that works well for the state and other cities. So, so I agree, it's quite unusual, and it was quite unusual um, for me to hear, you know, to hear and explore. Originally, they had wanted to come forward with three years of uh, back taxes. Case law would suggest that five years um, would be the statute of limitations. So um, we, they were they uh, were finally agreeing to uh, come with four and with the interest. So um, um, that is 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 that a sufficient uh, answer to your question? There were a couple of questions in there, so I hope I'm I'm hitting what I can. Yeah. yeah. And I can piggyback on that. Uh, as Barb has described, uh, the city of Kansas City, state of Missouri, they have uh, legal platforms that would uh, suggest that it would make it uh, more formal for companies that are not paying their fair share of taxes or whether they have a business license or not. They have a particular uh, ordinances in place. And so I would uh, agree with Barb that maybe the city of St. Louis would maybe want to pass an ordinance to capture those people or companies. And this one probably is a big enough company since they're willing to pay or uh, come forward and use you know, a large law firm like Brian Cave and willing to pay not only uh, four years of, of back taxes, but interest as well. Um, so I think as, as we go forward, maybe we look at this agreement and see if it is sufficient for us or would we want to wait? Uh, you know, I, would, I, I was convinced uh, by Barb uh, when she mentioned that the city of Kansas City had, had uh, a settlement very similar, well, the same as this or similar with this exact same company. So, um, I want all of those uh, companies out there that are not paying their taxes to come forward. And I think this would be one, certainly that we could add to our budget, you know, this million dollars, if this was something that uh, we were clear about. But I did want it to be brought to ENA so that we could have just this kind of discussion. I don't think it, uh... I don't think it's proper for us to vote on this, uh, not knowing who the company is. Uh, we could be in direct conflict of interest by doing so. Uh, uh, you know, we could have family members that work there. We can have uh, gotten campaign contributions from any sort of thing like that. And, uh, you know, if it's found that these, the terms are very desirable terms, uh, that could be a problem for it. So I'm not, there's, I, I'm, I will not be voting on this today. With, and I will not vote on this in, unless I know exactly who the company is. And Barb, could I ask again, uh, they're, they are saying, okay, they've been operating here for six years, right? And Apparently. How many, how many years worth of taxes is this? Four. Why not six? Well, um, I believe case law suggests that the five years would be the statute of limitations. 
originally um, I did ask them if for five and uh, they had only offered three. So that is how we arrived at four. So, uh, and as to the um, identity, I, I don't have that to offer and I, I am certainly not withholding anything there. And um, so I guess that that's the sort of the other side of the coin. Um, we don't have a way to pursue them. So, so it's sort of, um, th that's where we are right now. I don't, I don't have a way to track them or, or, you know, recommend suing them because I don't know who they are. Right. It'd be uh, worthwhile for us to hire a consultant to find all of the companies operating uh, phone service uh, in our city. Uh, because if this one owes a million, they owe more than a million, frankly, they owe all six years since they just think that they're going to get by with a couple of years and not paying it. Uh, Barb, did you, you know, it, so if there's one there, maybe there's more and we should figure that out. Uh, Barb, do you know if they uh, had a, have a business license to operate? Do you know? I don't because I don't know their identity. So I, I do don't you know, know if they've paid their earnings tax? I, I, I don't, I, and I can't tell you because I don't have their identity. So I can't, I couldn't verify any of those things. I, you know, I just came to our office and I, I felt it had to be, shared with the office oh, yeah. that collects this tax and it had to be you know, it had to be shared and and um so i i'm br i'm bringing what we have here because it is you know it it is something that you need to know about it is an offer yeah. on the table i i understand that did one of the things that we're agreeing to do in here is we're agreeing not to tell any other taxing authorities about this that except, to the extent, so, to except to the extent required by law. So they're looking for some degree of confidentiality, except to the extent that's required by law. So. Well, you know, I, I, I believe that the Collector of Revenues Office has uh, an agreement with the IRS to share uh, data. Um, I don't know what's in that agreement specifically. So I, I for one, would like to um, not vote on this today and maybe we can, you know, is, is this, um, was this agreement drafted by uh, the company's lawyer? Um, yes, it was drafted by Carol Isles of, um, of the uh, anonymous company to of Brian Cave, um, it's been amended, but uh, but she did the original draft. I will say that the amount is fluid. It was calculated four years from this month, so it might be a different amount if, say, it were approved next month. Or I just want to throw that out there. Hmm. Well, why would it be a different amount? I mean, it if might be more money. If it's calculated on gross receipts and um, you're looking at them for, you know, so, so many months that constitute four years, it, I think it would change. And I don't know for up or down. I, I truly don't know that, that this business or its trajectory, I just, it, it won't be the same number. To us. Okay. Uh, the Comptro Madam Comptroller stated that the city councilor has been working on this for months. When did this first come to your attention? Oh gosh, I don't have a, a date in front of me, but it sort of came in as um, something that Mark Lawson had. I remember before when he left uh, his position and I first read the email and um, I, I think people, it was very confusing. People were unwilling uh, to really do anything because of the anonymous nature. We've never had any any similar circumstance. So, um, but at some point, I did call uh, the attorney Carol Isles, and um, when she began to uh, talk about dollars and cents, I needed I felt like I needed to get the information to out to, uh, oh. you know, to, I'm to glad you did office that collects the tax 
and to see what, if anything, we could do with this information. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I, I totally agree with your, um, with your idea here. Um, so personally, I would rather uh, defer this to the next meeting and maybe we can get some additional information. Uh, I know there is a motion and a second on here, so I'm just giving you my preference if anybody wants to. Yeah, I, there's absolutely no way do I think we can take action on this without knowing who that company is. We can take that up in closed session. Um, so, you know, can you inform them that we need that information and then at the next regularly scheduled ENA, I think we take it up then and we take it up in closed session. Uh, but we have to have that information uh, to vote on on um, uh, any type of settlement agreement with a company. I don't see I don't see how we can do that, and Barb. But I do want to thank you for all of your work uh, yes. on this. You did you did a great job. I really appreciate it, and um, uh, reminds me of when I first became president of the Board of Aldman, you sat next to me and helped me out for the couple, first couple of months. So I appreciate your work. Appreciate yeah, I agree with that. The other thing, Barb, uh, if I could say, they have to agree to pay their other taxes that, that may be due. I don't know what those are since I don't know, you know, who they are or, or exactly what they do. But, uh, you know, presumably they've been collecting these gross receipts tax from their customers because that's how that works. If you look at your cell phone bill or whatever, you know, the taxes go on there. So presumably they've probably been collecting them. They've probably been collecting them for the whole six years. Um, so yeah, I, we need to know a little more if we could, please. The um, attorney, I sent her the information. I assume Ms. Giles is listening to this call and okay. um, and is getting this information. Okay, but that's great. If not, you can relay it to her. That's, that's great. Um, Absolutely. So, okay. Would anybody like to withdraw their second or their motion? I would like to take the opportunity to withdraw my motion, uh, Madam Mayor. No, uh, this second. item, since it appears that, that we won't be voting affirmative on, on this item on today. Thank you for that. Okay, the motion and the second have been withdrawn with regard to item number 10, 20.107. Next item. Madam Mayor, I would like to move that item one be approved with uh, explanation of some items that was added on uh, late um, uh, in exhibit A, page five, CDA items. I have no uh, explanation as to why these items that are quite large was added on at such a, a late uh, you said, uh, you, said uh, you moved for item one. Which item? Item one. Item one at the top of the page, uh, 20.098. So that this is uh, the item number one, exhibit A, page five, items number 20 and 21. Yes, I would just like an explanation. I understand at the time of uh, close to posting the agenda, this item uh, came to the attention, uh, Madam Mayor, of your staff that it had not been added. It looked like it was pretty important, but I just uh, did not get a chance to review what this is all about. Uh, it looks like it's something that we want um, to do, but i just like an explanation. Uh, um, Madam Comptroller, just for clarification, are you making a motion for approval of item number one or just a motion? One which would include all of the items, uh, which would include items 20 through 21, but I want an explanation of okay. uh, if that can happen. So that's what I'm asking, uh, Mr. President. Uh, but the motion so, is for adoption, but not just a motion for discussion purposes. That is correct, it's for adoption. Okay, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. 
We have some discussion here with a question from Madam Comptroller with regard to items number 20 and 21. Uh, Madam Comptroller, it's my understanding that this, these are the last uh, couple of pieces for the closing on Preservation Square. You know, we got a choice grant on that project before I was even the mayor, so probably four years ago or so by now. And what this does is allows for the uh, final closing. Uh, Todd's walking in here. Todd, do you have any more information on this? Uh, allows for the final closing on these pieces of Preservation Square. Do you have anything else? I called Matt Mulcahy on the phone there. He's on the just run through his office. Okay. Matt, are you so there? If, if it's acceptable, uh, Matt, Matt, are you on the line? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn you up here. Matt Moak is here with CDA to explain, to, to talk about this. Normally he'd be in the room, but you know, we're doing this different. So um, at any rate, Matt, tell us about items number 20 and 21 having to do with Preservation Square, please. Right. So um, the, the amount of choice money that needs to be set up and authorized to be used for this project. And when I say choice money, I mean federal CNI money that was awarded to the city, 29.5 million. Um, the amount that needs to be set up to be used for the project has increased slightly from what was previously authorized. Um, I don't have the, the number right in front of me, but as I recall, it went up about $940,000. Uh, from what had previously been authorized. And it's, it's really, it, it's not part of money we haven't previously appro approved pursuant to the master development agreement. We approved the whole 29,500 back in February, but we're taking a little extra piece of that 29,500 in anticipation of the phase one closing, which is to occur here in a couple of weeks. 29 um, million. 29 or, million, right, Matt? The twenty-nine million five hundred is all was all approved pursuant to the master development agreement, which we passed through ENA in February. But what we do is as we pull amounts out and get ready to pay them out, we bring those amounts back to ENA, and that's what this is in a nutshell. There's two pieces. There's a part of the MDA, the master development agreement, that were an additional piece that we're moving through, and there was also an increase in the amount of the additional services agreement uh, to be allocated to improve the public streets and the other public works that are happening at the site. And that was increased as well. Those are the two documents before you. And, and Matt, if I could ask, it's uh, $940,708 for Preservation Square 123 Landlord LLC. And right. then it's four million eight hundred and sixty-three thousand eight hundred ninety-three dollars. McCormick Baron Salazar and its affiliate affiliate Preservation Square One, LLP. Uh, those both have the same explanations here. Yeah, and essentially, Mayor, what you just touched on is that in addition to the money being advanced here as part of the overall development for public works as well as for the housing construction, two new McCormick Barron affiliated names have been injected into the deal. And so the other part of this, and I, I tried to outline that in the summary I attached to the first letter, was to also seek the affiliate authority, you know, affiliate, uh, kind of like, it's not a name change per se, but Preservation Square One, for example, is being put in place um, to do the housing construction that's going to commence on the site after we close uh, financial here in a couple of weeks. They are a new entity, part of McCormick Barron, but a new entity, so that, that's also part of the request to authorize them to receive the money. Okay. Uh, certainly, I, I know we all want to move Preservation Square forward and we want to make sure we're in compliance on all this choice money. I don't have attached to the agenda any, any, uh, anything from you. I don't know if you submitted it or not. Um, yeah, it was uh, the first letter 
uh, I had to email these letters over to Todd, but there were two letters, and one had a summary attached as the third page. I don't know. It was a PDF. So I'm trying to locate that right now. Um, so P, when do we can bring that over? I guess it was on the 15th. Okay, since it's not attached, um, is this uh, urgent or um, is it this? It is because they need to line out the money and the additional names because they are telling us just in the last couple of weeks, they indicated they want to close the phase one financial closing in early June. So it will be prior to the June ENA meeting and the rush to get this through now. And so uh, the question I have, these changes, uh, these additions uh, with the money, I, I understand the explanation, uh, but the additional company that would not have been in the original agreements that was passed by the Board of Aldermen, does that mean that ENA uh, would be sufficient to approve an original agreement that was passed out by the board? Or is this like bypassing the board or was there language in that? Uh, ordinance that would uh, require them to go back to the board or or or, or not? Oh, I, I'm so sorry, Ms. Comptroller. I'm not sure who's speaking, but I get this break yes, is terrible for me, so I'm having a hard time understanding. Hey, Matt, hang on a minute. We're gonna okay. we're gonna try to turn this volume up on here so okay. that you can hear better. Okay. One one can second, have... Madam Comptroller. Yeah, and I. And I am looking at the uh, two letters that came over, and the first letter does have the summary of the prior approvals, as well as the summary of the current request. And the hope was, of course, that would make it easier to follow. Um, so maybe Todd could find these. Yeah, I mean, it's too Todd and copy Linda. I, I just, uh, I mean, I certainly can resend this right now. No, uh, I, maybe we okay. should, yeah. Maybe we can move on to something else. And uh, of course, I don't know how we would be getting it to you all. Um, well, I, uh, this is the control I'm all in favor of, of moving forward uh, with this item since it does look like it's important, but it would be a sad thing that the, to find out later uh, that the ENA approval is insufficient and, and that it should go back to the board. So that's a simple question. Maybe a lawyer could kind of review those documents so that we will be in full compliance with the ordinance and the rest of the agreement. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. I couldn't really understand that. I don't know where. So Matt, let me see if I can repeat this. Uh, Madam, uh, Madam Comptroller, um, correct me if I don't say this right. Uh, I believe what you're saying, Madam Comptroller, can you hear this, Matt? Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Is that, um, of course, we want to move forward. Time is of the essence on this, but the lawyers need to review to make sure that the change in the name of the entities or the addition of some new entities is that the approval of ENA is sufficient on that rather than having to go back to the Board of Aldermen. Do I have that right, Madam Comptroller? Yes, ma'am, you do. Uh, as you know, my uh, motion is for approval, so I am all for moving this forward. But I did want to, to acknowledge that there were these uh, huge changes, not only in dollar amounts, but it, uh, additional entities added. And if these kinds of changes can be approved solely by ENA, then that would make it sufficient. But if not, then are we going to be closing on something that has not been properly uh, follow, following compliance or complied with? Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, if I may, I guess the insertion of new entities that are affiliates of a coring bearing really has been going on for six, eight months. Um, that includes an LCRA not-for-profit entity that was formed as reference in one of these documents by 
Reservation Square, one, two, three, Landlord LLC. They are to hold the land, but also uh, be a recipient of the funding for its the public improvement. So I, I guess my only point there being um, we've sort of been, it's not a name change per se, it's an additional affiliate of McCormick Bearing being authorized. And so that hasn't been a, a problem up to now. And by that, I just mean it's, it's all entities other than the LCRA entities, all entities that um, McCormick Bearing is using to carry out this project. And it, it hasn't been, um, it hasn't been an issue in the past legally. In other words, we may well to move those through uh, the Board of Estimate and Apportionment without um, without any other legal opinion, what have you. Matt, let me ask a quick question on that. Is the uh, successor entity have the exact same ownership as the prior entity? I believe so, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Madam Comptroller, are you ready to vote on this or? Absolutely. You are? Okay. So there is a motion and a second uh, to pass. I guess, uh, let, me, let me say one more thing here, Madam Comptroller. It has to do with item number one on this Exhibit A list. Um, it's a request from you to, I think we, Matt, I think we're going to hang up on you. Bye. It's a request. It's a request from you to hire um, Lewis Rice LLC for fifty thousand dollars for professional services. Is this for legal services for your office, Madam Mayor? This uh, contract is to provide professional services as it relates to various issues regarding the operations of the office of the controller. The yeah, legal I saw that. Not part of what this request is about. I'm sorry, say the last part again. Legal services is not what this request is about. Not about, so it's for non-legal services, other, other sorts of professional services. Services regarding the operations of the Office of the Controller. Okay. Um, okay, uh, that, that's fine, since it is for non-legal uh, services. Yes, ma'am. This same law firm, Madam Mayor, has been hired for uh, the assessor's office as well. Those okay. are the professional services that this particular law firm is providing does not include legal services that, uh, that I'm aware of as well. Okay. All right. I understand, sort of. Uh, I understand well enough. Let me say it like that. All right. So now, if, there are no, if there's no other discussion on uh, item number one, 20.098. We do have a motion and a second. All in favor of passing item number one, please say aye. 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 President Reed, I, I, I saw you, Comptroller. President Reed, aye. I said aye. Okay, sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'll okay. talk louder, speak up louder. Okay, um, next item. We want to take up here. We still have open item number four, six, and seven. Madam Mayor, I'd like to ask for approval for item number four. It's a request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of a resolution to withdraw the preliminary application for inclusion of the St. Louis Lambert International Airport from the FAA Airport Privatization Pilot Program. Is there a second? Okay, let me just say I'm not uh, opposed to doing this. Um, however, I don't think it's the purview of the board of ENA. Uh, Francis Slay, Mayor Francis Slay, was the one who um, submitted the preliminary application. So. Um, 
you know, well, let's, uh, yeah, I'll have the city councilor look at this. I don't believe they've looked at it yet. Um, so I, I will have them look at this. So if, Madam Mayor, is, is it your intention, Madam Mayor, to withdraw the preliminary application uh, for consideration of Lambert International Airport uh, to be considered for privatization pilot program? Is that what I'm hearing from you, Madam Mayor, that you will seek guidance from the uh, law department in order to withdraw the application from the FAA? I will seek guidance from the law department. You know, as you know, I was the one who uh, uh, terminated, uh, pulled the plug on maybe, with a letter that I wrote dated in de December to stop this process. And uh, then the board of ENA terminated the contract that we had previously signed, uh, I think in January. And so, yes, I'm going to seek counsel on this as to, you know, what the proper uh, form would be. And you are intending to withdraw? I'm going to seek counsel on this. And the reason that it's so important, Madam Mayor, is that we are a national and international airport. Uh, we do compete across the country. We want to be clear to those uh, travelers that, uh, as well as those airlines, that want to do business in our city. We have great relationships with the airlines that we have now. We want to keep those relationships and we want to increase uh, traffic at Lambert International Airport. And so as long as there is a limbo-like uh, uh, application out there, it does not send a strong signal as to the support that this city government can give to uh, our precious asset uh, Lambert International Airport. So we need to be uh, have strong leadership and strong intent as to where we're going uh, with the airport going forward. Will the city of St. Louis take up and build the capital needs of the airport or will we remain in limbo? And so I think that should come in the short term rather than in a long term in terms of seeking out counsel, uh, Madam Mayor. And I think this resolution today would give us the opportunity to move forward pretty swiftly rather than wait another few years. It's been approximately three and a half, close to four years that, uh, as you had mentioned, that uh, former Mayor Slay put this in motion. And I think that the, the withdrawal of the application would play totally. Right now we're in limbo without it being totally withdrawn. Well, those are my comments on the matter. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I will seek counsel on this, and I uh, hear your, your point of view on this. I think we should do it properly. And um, I honestly, I did not see this resolution. I think the resolution, I don't know who wrote it, maybe someone in your office, or maybe I, I did check a little bit ago with the city councilor. They, to, one person that I talked to said that they had not written it. So let me let me uh, get some counsel on this and see what the proper way of doing it. I am in conversations with the airlines, and it might be interesting to those of the folks wa uh, watching at home or watching at your office uh, to know that there's a um, every morning the airport is tracking the traffic in and out of of uh, Lambert St. Louis Airport or it's St. Louis Lambert Airport. Let me get that correct. Uh, and there was a period of time about three or four weeks ago when we had as few as 600 people a day or 800 people a day. Now it's running about 2,000 people a day, both in and out, 2,000 in, 2,000 out in that, in that neighborhood. Um, normally, we would have about 22,000 people a day in and 22,000 people a day out. So certainly it's a very dire uh, situation with regard to the airlines and with regard to Lambert. So thank you for that. All right, um, item number six, or six and seven remain. Madam Mayor, I would move for approval of item number six, request from the Office of the Comptroller, Deputy Comptroller, of finance and development for approval of board bill 16. Uh, this ordinance authorizes the issuance of tax revenue anticipation notes 
Series 2020 in the, and not to exceed 65 million. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second. Madam Comptroller, you want to tell us uh, about this? I believe, and I'm, I'm sure this is something that we do every year, correct? Well, yes, Madam Mayor. Prior to my becoming Comptroller over 25 years ago, well, the former Comptroller, I believe, uh, understood the uh, cash, flow is cash flow issues of the city very well, and so, so that uh, we could continue to deliver city services to our citizens at a pretty normal rate as opposed to a rate that would be kind of um, matched with when uh, other taxes like property taxes would be received, which is in the month of December. Uh, there was a thought back, I guess, almost 30 years ago that a, a tax anticipation or tax revenue anticipation note would help us uh, bridge the gap between receiving those uh, property taxes and other taxes so that we could continue to make payroll, number one, uh, for city employees, so they would have some security as to the being paid, you know, our forestry workers, our street repairmen, and all of those people in traffic and the police uh, and fire. Uh, so this is an assurance that there would be no break or delay. And of course, the bills that come with delivering city services uh, through our refuse uh, contracts and other big, huge contracts that we have in the city. Uh, so each year we uh, borrow an amount of money that is repaid annually when those taxes come in and large, largely your, uh, I mean your property taxes and you know, your real estate and personal property taxes are gonna come at the end of the year. And for us in terms of fiscal year, that's mid year. And so this is what this is about. Uh, many of you uh, who are aldermen and, and others understand this. Uh, president, yeah. you've been an alderman as well as the president for you know however many years, Madam Mayor. You are should be very familiar with this. There's no change uh, with this kind of, of trans, uh, as it's called, uh, tax revenue anticipation notes. Is there Thank any you question? for that. I I am very familiar with it. Uh, I just wanted our uh, the public who is probably on this to be able to, to uh, some people might say, well, why is the city borrowing $65 million right now? Your explanation was, was spot on. And so thank you for that. It's a working capital loan because um, we got to pay the bills throughout the year. So, so thank you for that explanation. So there's a, been a motion and a second, all in favor of, um, Pass item number six, please say aye. 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 Okay, everyone voted aye, so that number, item number six passes. Last item on the agenda is item number seven. I move for adoption of item number seven as printed on the agenda. I'll second that. Is there any discussion of item number seven? This is a transfer of $5 million from the parking meter fund to general revenue. This is a... Uh, um, I, I would like to just start by thanking Alderman Jeffrey Boyd for, um, for working to get this done and also the parking commission uh, who brought this uh, issue forward. But uh, certainly it would not have happened had not uh, Alderman Boyd stepped up to the plate and worked to identify this additional funding. Uh, I don't think it's any surprise to anyone, um, you know, certainly in the city, but across the state that, uh, that we're in trouble and we need additional revenue. Uh, and this does not place an undue burden on the, um, on the treasurer's office at all, uh, and it helps us meet our base obligations. And I must add that this is the city's money. So, <laughs> so you know, if we need our money, we need to step up to the plate and, and uh, move our money where we need it to serve our constituents. It's not about one person, it's about serving the constituency of the city of St. Louis. 
So I'm really happy to support this $5 million transfer that was brought forward by Alderman Jeffrey Boyd. Thank you, President Reid. Is there any other discussion? Uh, I would simply say that the uh, parking uh, meter fund budget, uh, as I understand it, is uh, not taken up by the Board of PNA. Uh, this has been traditionally for um, ever uh, taken up by the Board of Aldermen. Uh, so the Board of ENA should not uh, take this up, but rather the Board of Aldermen uh, should be taking this matter up. I think it's because it's a transfer uh, of funds. It is, um, uh, the attorney still on the phone with us. I know you had a hard time. Mike Garvin, is he still there? He's not still on the call. All right. I don't know if Paul could talk to it, speak to it. Well, we have had a transfer, as you know, last year. Um, I believe there was a $12 million uh, that was solely taken up by the Board of Aldermen and passed. And once it's passed by the board, then, of course, the Board of DNA can take it up in terms of appropriation. But right now, it, I believe that is not, uh, is, to, is preliminary to be on any ENA agenda because the Board of Aldermen has not acted, uh, not through their committee, nor through the floor. Once it's passed and it's ready dollars that could be transferred over to general fund as you have here, then the Board of ENA can take it up, take up the matter. The Board of ENA does not have jurisdiction to take up the matters uh, of the budget of the yeah. uh, parking meter commission uh, 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 fund at all. There's nothing in the law that I'm aware of in the charter nor the state statute that calls for the board, e the board of ENA to act prior to the board of aldermen's a final uh, ordinance to, because of course this board is, is for uh, appropriation purposes. Uh, this money is unavailable for any transfer for this board at this time. We transfer all monies that is under the jurisdiction of the Board of ENA. These dollars are not. And I understand you're saying that this is city dollars. I agree, but I just think this is preliminary coming to the Board of ENA is what I'm saying to you. This is preliminary. The Board of Aldermen have not acted. So, so, you so if I could say that the ordinance, num the board bill, excuse me, number 13, says an ordinance recommended by the Parking Commission and the Board of Estimate and Apportionment. So it's in the first line of this bill that it would have to also be recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment. Yeah. And, and, and I just want to ask, what is the law that says that that is uh, legal? Yeah, I, I, I understand that. Okay. So I, I don't think it would, there would be any harm in passing this, uh, but. The, e uh, the Board of ENA will have to take this up prior to it passing the full Board of Altman, right? And, and me signing it and Mary, you, you signing it. We, it will have to be, taken up by the Board of ENA sometime during this time period while it's under discussion and up for consideration for the Board, for the board of Aldermen. Um, I don't see how we can do it without, uh, without some action from the Board of ENA and the Parking Commission. Uh, as you stated, it states it in the first paragraph of the bill. Right. So I it, it certainly would not do any harm for the Board of ENA to pass this. And then if the Board of Aldermen decided something different, well, it would be a moot point. So yeah. um, there is a motion and a second. So are you saying that the lawyers for the Parking Commission did write this board bill? Or is there some lawyer that can speak up to the fact whether this is legal or, or illegal? I just wanted to just make that point because certainly lawyers do know whether or not the Board of Estimate and Apportionment has jurisdiction at this time. Yeah lawyer that could speak to this that might want to get on the phone and give some explanation or a board, board lawyer or, or some lawyer 
Well, well, yeah, just, 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 as a, just as a general rule, uh, any measures that are taken up by the Board of Aldermen that require ENA's involvement, that happens prior to that bill actually passing uh, the Board of Aldermen. And what you say, um, so, is that but, 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 the question is, does this require ENA? And that's the simple I, question that I have. It is written in the board bill, and the question is, is it legal? And that's simple, and if it's a yes, then that's great, but if it's not, then let's have an explanation, because I'm not disagreeing with you, but I do disagree that this one right here is uh, timely for the Board of ENA. I think it's preliminary. I think that it should be uh, presented to the board prior to this. So if there's a law, or someone that would want to get on the phone, Madam Mayor, if you can direct the law department to get on, uh, then we can simply, you know, get this answered. It's a real simple question. Uh, I have not seen the uh, parking meter uh, budget put to the board of ENA ever. And so I don't know, Madam Mayor, in your four years, three and a half, four years, have you, uh, Mr. President, you've been here 16. This is the first time that I've seen this. I've seen many other board bills that that must come to, by uh, by the Board of ENA, but the Parking Commission since 1951, I believe it is, isn't that when those uh, state statutes were, were enacted? That's the first state statute, and of course there are others, but none of them have any representation that the parking meter fund shall go before the Board of ENA that I'm aware of. And I could be wrong, but if there's a lawyer that could speak to that, you know, those statutes are readily available. Uh, they're online, as a matter of fact. Does it say somewhere that the Board of E&A should uh, take up matters that are budgetary for the parking meter fund? Um, uh, Madam Mayor, if you will, um, you know, I've served on the Board of E&A for, you know, quite a long time. Uh, in my recollection, you know, I cannot remember a time where mm -hmm. we've, had to make a mid-year appropriations uh, from the treasurer's office with recommendation of the parking commission of this of this sort. Uh, but we are living in different times now with COVID-19 uh, in lockdown. I can I, I can also tell you it wasn't until this time that I can ever remember having a Zoom conference for the board of ENA. Uh, but I can tell you this, that these things are timely and uh, this $5 million is needed. Um, uh, the, the treasurer can take a position that she would like to still keep all that money for herself and do whatever. But we need this to, to assure the operations of our city. Uh, so I'm fully supportive of it. Uh, and like I said, the reason we probably haven't seen this is because this is something that we have not done before where we have directly from the treasurer's office in this manner, right? Uh, but it is required and we have the legal authority to do so. Um, and it's an appropriation. So uh, it's an appropriations bill. So, I, you know, I'm fully supportive of it. I think, uh, again, I cannot thank Alderman Jeffrey Boyd enough. Whenever you take on these very difficult situations like this, where you have, uh, you, know, a, you know, a person on the other side that, that uh, for whatever reason, out of politics or whatever, not wanting to uh, support uh, the total operations of the city, uh, these things can be difficult. It makes it, makes, uh, it, makes it difficult on all ends. But I can tell you that even once we transfer this $5 million, there's still 22.8 million sitting there. So we're not putting an undue burden on anyone. And this again is the city's money. It's all the people's money who paid all those meters and all those parking tickets, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now we're gonna to try to use it to provide some service to them. Yeah, it's a department. Well, I am aware of opposition on the board of Autumn, as I did here yesterday at, uh, the meeting at the Ways and Means, and there's uh, opposition to this actual transfer of funds in this manner and what it is uh, for. 
I don't know then, uh, Mr. President, if you're acting uh, uh, prematurely uh, so that you could gain or garner support from the board of ENA, knowing that you do not have support for this transfer, as this is not an appropriation. It does say transfer. If it did say mid-year appropriation, that would have meant that the Board of Aldermen would have passed this measure and this uh, ENA then could take it up. I believe both you and Madam Mayor understand the difference between a transfer that's before you and uh, appropriation uh, that is not before you and that has not been approved by the Board of Aldermen. Do you not want us to mix what calls the public to believe that we're taking up an appropriation. This is a transfer. It is not legal, as you're stating, uh, Mr. President, and I do believe that's why uh, none of the lawyers are, are getting on the line who are here at work or on this Zoom call. They say were signed up earlier. I still see Michael Garvin, who was there. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, if a lawyer could speak to this, as I've asked you know, them to do, then we could get this matter settled because this is not an appropriation. It would become one once the board would finally pass, and then we move forward. So am I saying something that's foreign to any of you? Mm -hmm. No. I just think that we need to not uh, uh, pass something that should be taken up by the Board of Aldermen. And then after the wars, it should be taken up by the um, Board of ENA. Yeah. So, uh, Madam Comptroller, I think I see... Uh, Julian Bush, is that you, Julian? Uh, it is me. I did not know that uh, I was appearing. I was trying to get to listen. Here I am. Hello, You're everybody. Appearing. Just the top of your head is appearing, and I think Michael Garvin may also be on this call. So um, <clears throat> if either of you would like to address this, I guess the only thing that I would say before you address this is that time is of the essence on, on this bill. We're, we're facing massive uh, budget uh, revenue shortfalls on the budget and um, so the, the board bill, which is before us here, does reference the board of estimate and apportionment in two places uh, with an emergency clause on the bill. So happy to hear uh, your legal opinions or advice. I'll, I'll tell you, I, uh, I had to get on to that call, so I'm not, uh, I just got back on, so. I, I'm not sure what the topic is, to be honest. So the topic is the bill, board bill number 13, which is to transfer $5 million from the parking meter fund to the general reserve fund of the city of St. Louis to help offset expenditures from the general reserve fund necessitated by COVID-19 pandemic and the extraordinary costs incurred by the city. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> that's, that's the bill and the comptroller, and I'll paraphrase this, Madam Comptroller, uh, is wondering if it is legal for the Board of Estimate and Apportionment to uh, pass this prior to the Board of Aldermen passing it. Well, that is not uh, the question. The question is, does the Board of Estimate and Apportionment take up the parking meter fund budget? And as I understand, they do not. And in this case, which uh, mm -hmm. we have had President set which was just last year with the $12 million uh, transfer that was taken up during the budget at the Board of Aldermen. And then the ENA board would take it up as an appropriation following it. I do not believe the Board of ENA can appropriate parking meter funds and, and, or, and or transfers. So that is what we have before us, even though this is written to include the board bill is written to include the board of estimate and apportionment. I am saying it is inappropriate because I do not know of where the board of estimate and apportionment takes up matters of budgetary matters prior to action by the uh, board of aldermen. And uh, just uh, just as a point of clarification, the board of aldermen has already taken action. Um, I know the Madam Comptroller said that she was over at uh, Ways and Means and, and didn't think we'd have the votes, but the board bill has already been, been in committee, it's been discussed, it's been passed out of committee, uh, second read, and um, 
it's going it's coming up for perfection at the board of all and madam mayor you know uh, before we perfect and third reading final passage if the board of ena has to take something up that's when they take it up otherwise the bill has to lay over at the Board of Aldermen and be put on the informal uh, informal uh, calendar. That would be just tragic for our city, considering considering the great need and the, all the pressures that we have on our budget today because of COVID-19. Um, and again, it is, it, it's just absolutely shameful that the uh, treasurer is going through this le these lengths and playing politics at this level when so much is at stake, uh, and I cannot, I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, completely offended that uh, our city, the people in our city, are suffering right now. Right, their families all over the city suffering right now, and we need to transfer this money, and we need this money to be ready to address this big hole that we have in our budget, so that we can deliver the services to the city. It's not about the treasurer. It's about the residents of the city of St. Louis, the people that went to the polls and voted. Uh, on, the legal, on the legal issue, uh, the Parking Commission has already approved the transfer of the $5 million. Yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't draft this ordinance, but I believe what Alderman Boyd was intending to do was after the Parking Commission approved the transfer that he thought he should get an, uh, an ordinance for, uh, recommended by ENA to transfer the funds to the General Reserve prior to the end of the budget year. It's not, it, he didn't, I don't think he intended for it to be part of the next year's budget. If I could uh, supplement Mike's remarks, um, and I, I put these remarks forward with a little bit of trepidation because I, I really haven't studied it, but, but um, the um, ordinances that regulate the parking commission and the parking meter fund provide that the budget uh, of the parking commission uh, should be, the, the budget of the parking uh, division uh, is prepared and recommended by the parking commission. That proposed budget goes to the board of aldermen for its approval. And that budget would include the transfer of funds from the parking meter fund to the city general revenues if the parking commission so decided. There's nothing in the ordinances that provide for a role for the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, but as you know, the charter supersedes the ordinances. And the charter requires all budgets to be recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment. So if this resolution is, is, is recommending a budget of the Barking Commission, including the transfer of money, it's perfectly appropriate that it go before the Board of Estimate and Apportionment. Uh, to get its concurrence with whatever the Board of Aldermen are going to do. Um, so if I understand the situation correctly, and I may not, uh, the issue of the Parking Commission's budget, including transferring money uh, to the general fund from the parking meter fund, uh, is pro properly before the Board of Estimate and Apportionment because it requires the concurrence of the Board of Aldermen and the Board of Estimate Apportionment, just like any other city appropriation and budget. Thank you. I, I think that uh, 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 the city councilor explained it uh, exactly correct. Uh, that is the interpretation of the Board of Aldermen. And um, uh, I think we move, I think is just absolutely critical that we move forward with item number seven today. So I think item number seven, there's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Well, I will finally say that I did hear the president of the board say that this money would be moved uh, for expenditures or to offset expenditures. I do uh, see that, but I do not see how money's going to the reserve fund then would be offsetting in the expenditures. The reserve fund is what it is. It's a reserve fund that has not been appropriate, appropriated. Uh, this money, this five million will not be appropriated or this action today does not appropriate this five million and make it available for spending on any city services. 
So I do want to make that clear. A lot of times people, you know, put out there that the this is going to happen and that the families are waiting. If this is approved today, this does not make this money ready for spending according to what the definition of a general fund reserve fund is. A general fund reserve fund is not a place where the expenditures are readily available and have been appropriated or will be appropriated for expending these funds. So I, I also I wanted to make that clear so that families would, would, would not believe that we are including an additional amount of money that has been appropriated. Even the board, this board bill does not speak or have the word um, of this fund, of, of, you know, it's not worded to say that this transfer is appropriated uh, for uh, expending or expenditures on behalf of the uh, delivery of city services uh, to the citizens. So it's not saying that uh, whatsoever. It's saying that it would be a, a transfer. And, um, and it does not really uh, speak clearly as to whether or not it is appropriate that this is before the Board of Estimate and Apportionment because as the City Council stated that the Parking Commission along with the Board of Aldermen is sufficient that this would uh, be taken up and that is what I have said all along. But the fact that it is before the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, uh, which I'm hearing, is, as the mayor has stated earlier, is not so bad or it's okay. Uh, it's just following that this is something that uh, is not necessary is where I, um, I was saying it from the very beginning. This, uh, whether it's passed here or not, does not negate the fact that it can be finally we just what gave her authority to overspend the accounts that we needed exactly for the expenses what, um, for the rest of the fiscal yeah. year. Maybe I should point that out to her. My mayor, um, uh, uh, just a couple of points. Uh, first, um, uh, my controller, I think um, any reasonable person, any, any, I think it's, you know, should just being reasonable, we know that uh, it's highly unlikely that we will not have to dip into our reserve fund, right? And we know that we know that uh, with upwards of fifty, sixty million dollar hole in our budget, uh, not understanding what our revenue outlook truly is going to look like across the next few months, that we need more money in our general reserve. So by, put, so by making this transfer and getting the funds over there, that is positioning those funds to be available to address the issues of city services directly, right? So, so for the families, I can tell them, yes, we have now put an additional $5 million in place that will be able to help us. I can also tell the city employees, yes, we have put additional $5 million in place so that we want, so that we will have a little more funds and a little more cushion, not to have to do furloughs and not to have to do layoffs and not to have to do, you know, any of those things, right? And uh, that they can count on the city being there for them, right? So uh, we have additional expenses, and I'm gonna say it again: the treasurer should be. This is shameful that that there is an intentional lobbying effort to stop the transfer of funds that we need in a time like this when the city's in such dire straits. And this is five million. She's still sitting on $22.8 million. So I'm very proud of this, this action. I think it needs to move forward. And I am telling people that yes, we have added another $5 million over to help us through this difficult time. And if I might point out on item number five today, we did give the comptroller uh, approval to overspend accounts as needed to meet the city's fiscal obligation or financial obligation. So that certainly would be good for this $5 million uh, over in the uh, uh, city's budget. So there is a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, all in favor of uh, passing item number seven, <clears throat> aye. Um, I'm sorry, President Reed, did you vote? Yeah, I voted aye. Aye. Uh, Comptroller Green? I'm voting no. Okay. Uh, 
I'm voting aye. So uh, this, this item number seven does pass. Thank you all. <clears throat> that concludes the uh, items presented for the first time. Are there any additional items that the board may wish to discuss? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, I have an item. I have a letter that I'd like to present this time. And I think everyone has been emailed the letter. What I don't know if I've, is a, the letter just recently come in? Uh, I believe so. Let me uh, pause and go check. <clears throat> Hang on, I'll, I'll look in my inbox while we're speaking. And who's the letter? Is, is it from your office? Yes. Okay, let me look. 234. 234. Okay, yes. Um, Madam Comptroller, uh, there was an email that came in at 2.34 today. I'm opening it now. Okay, I'm back. And yes, that is the additional uh, item. You, you want to, I'm reading this on my phone. So would you, you want to tell us about this, what your request? Yes, Madam Mayor, I will. Um, I would like to respectfully request that the Board of Estimate and Apportionment would consider utilizing FEMA reimbursement funds instead of the city reserve funds as a replacement for the $1 million being allocated for affordable housing. In addition, please consider making this increase to affordable housing a permanent adjustment for future budgets. Thank you for your kind consideration of this matter. Okay. Now the discussion point that I will make here is FEMA reimbursement funds are coming to support us through this pandemic. And it is a, a form of replacing revenues that we all recognize as important FEMA funds for be used to the city of St. Louis. I'm on the city does uh, need support uh, for affordable housing as possible. of funds that will be coming uh, coming in the, fund, in the form of revenues, replacement revenues. The a reserve fund one million that was passed last ENA meeting is a one-time uh, adjustment for affordable housing. We'll this letter is asking that we would consider the use of FEMA revenues, and I believe this would make it possible for a permanent increase for affordable housing going forward. The failure of using FEMA funds instead of the city reserve funds will send the signal that the city is only interested in a one-time uh, increase in the affordable housing uh, fund when I'm asking that we will look at mm -hmm. a permanent increase of uh, funding for affordable housing. In this case, we will be using the uh, FEMA dollars as the start of such an increase in, in uh, affordable housing funds. So this is a simple letter to ask the Board of Estimate Apportionment to consider this. Of course, this is not an item that you've had time to think about and pass for approval today. This is not, you know, I'm not asking for a motion to approve, but I believe it's a recommendation that certainly should be uh, set forth by the Board of Estimate Apportionment as we move forward uh, with uh, dealing with how we're going to reopen the city, how we're gonna uh, answer people who are in dire need of affordable housing, and how are we going to go forward in the aftermath of the uh, pandemic? We need to be cognizant that affordable housing for the next several years and not months is going to be uh, needed. You know, an, an increase in, in, in affordable housing is something that we can certainly accommodate if we are looking at the use of how to spend those FEMA funds. Uh, including that one million uh, that was previously approved to come out of the reserve and now replacing it with FEMA funds instead. I think we need to be looking at that. This is a recommendation from the finance uh, committee in the comptroller's office. We believe this is the right thing to do. 
It is not a political thing. It is a fiscally responsible uh, action that I'm asking the Board of Estimate and Apportionment to take today. Under consideration. Thank you, Madam Comptroller. I, I am just reading this letter. We got it about 2.34 today. Uh, let me just say that, as you know, we're very uh, uh, committed to providing the $6 million in funding to the Affordable Housing Commission. Uh, the FEMA funds are for uh, the some reimbursement of uh, directly related COVID funds. But what I think we should do here is you're, you're suggesting that rather than take it out of the city's budget, we should go ahead and, and take it or, or try to get reimbursed for it from FEMA. That's a, a question that we can take up if, it, uh, if it's uh, allowable under those funds. Again, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, for your comments. I, and I do uh, say to you that the uh, committee uh, has uh, talked about this. We do know that this is allowable. Uh, we will be looking at uh, more areas that's allowable, but it's up to this city as to whether we are going to accommodate uh, uh, the affordable housing in a way that is uh, not only uh, meaningful, but substantial, as well as uh, there's some uh, permanence to the increase of the uh, former $5 million budget. We're looking at increasing it by a million, as you know. Uh, certainly, if we start with the FEMA funds, then certainly we can look at an annual appropriation of, of six plus million in the future if we are really going to do the work that's necessary for uh, uh, increasing the affordable housing needs, uh, dollars that are needed for affordable housing. So that's the, the issue here. It's, a, it's something that uh, we believe in, and, and further, uh, you know, the committee believes that, you know, when you're talking to rating agencies and when you're looking at the uh, fiscal responsible thing to do, uh, it's more fiscally responsible to use ready revenue, whether they're replacement revenues or not, than to dip in to reserve funds. Reserve funds are for what they are meant to be. Uh, the president did mention that there would be furloughs uh, considered and, and all those kinds of things in the future. We do have those kinds of things on the, the budget that Paul has presented. Uh, and you, all you have to do is go back and look. He presented that budget uh, to the Board of Aldermen May 1st, and furloughs was on that list. So uh, it is ser it's a serious matter uh, when you're talking about reserves and what they're used for. And when we can recommend to the rating agencies that we're going to consider using our revenues okay, instead of choice. our reserves. What, that what's my choice? A, a, a difference. Thank you, Madam Comptroller. I, 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 I wasn't aware of the uh, Finance Committee. I, that's a committee, I guess, within your office. That's great. We will take a look at this. There are, as you know, these federal funds, there are many regulations. We want to take advantage of absolutely as much in federal funding reimbursement as we can. To date, none of the federal funds have allowed us to use them for revenue replacement, but they have allowed, uh, they are allowing us to use them for reimbursement of COVID related expenses. So we will take a, a serious look at this. And if there's any way that this can happen, that's, that's what we'll do. So are there any other items for uh, discussion? Okay, well, Madam Comptroller, did you have something? I have none, no additional. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, I would be I move, a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn this session of the Board of ENA. We have thank a motion you. to adjourn. We have a second. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you all. Uh, well, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.